The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, In praying, do not babble like the pagans, who think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Fire and life are two properties which are uh, attributed to God, and we see uh, fire mentioned in today's responsorial psalm. This is in prophesying the second coming of Christ, where it says, fire goes before him and consumes his foes round about. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. And we know the letter to the Hebrews says that our God is a consuming fire. So God, who lives and dwells in the souls of his saints, we shouldn't be surprised when we see these properties also in the lives of the saints, like we see in the life of St. Elijah the prophet. Like a fire there appeared the prophet Elijah, whose words were as a flaming furnace. Because from the heart, the mouth speaks. So because the fire of the love of God and zeal for the Lord was there present in the heart of Elijah, that's what we have coming forth from his mouth. By the Lord's word, he shut up the heavens and three times brought down fire. And then finally, even at the end of his life, it says, Elijah was taken aloft in a whirlwind of fire in a chariot with fiery horses. So that's fire, and we also have life mentioned with regard to the prophet Elijah. You brought a dead man back to life from the netherworld by the will of the Lord. And actually, the commentary mentions that uh, this raising of the dead to life was the first of its kind since the creation of the world. Elijah the prophet was the first saint to raise someone from the dead. It was the son of the widow of Zarephath, whom Elijah, by his word, that is the invocation of God, resurrected. That's recounted in 1 Kings chapter 17. Now, we also see these things in the life of St. Francis, right? These properties attributed to St. Francis, who is like another Elijah in many respects. St. Francis is known as the seraphic father because the burning fire of the love of God that was present in his soul, right? The words and preaching of St. Francis, able to convert hearts and turn them towards God. And actually, the commentary also mentions this bringing the dead back to life, uh, in a similar way. It's not exactly the same, but it is very similar. The commentary says this. Thus, St. Francis brought back St. Bonaventure from the throes of death. And from thence he was called Bonaventura. For when he was about four years old in the year 1221 and sick unto death, with no longer any hope for life or medical remedy, his pious mother made a vow and commended her son to the prayers and merits of St. Francis. She vowed that if he regained his health, 
she would offer him to the Order of Friars Minor. So this was 1221. St. Bonaventure was only four years old. St. Francis was still alive at the time. He died in 1226. So St. Francis consoled the sobbing mother, prayed and interceded for the boy, who suddenly leaped up healthy. And rejoicing at the marvelous miracle, St. Francis prophesied, exclaiming, O Bonaventura. And from that moment, this name stuck, for he was previously called Giovanni. Whence, in some of the old codices, we read there written, Frater Ioannes Bonaventura. But more frequently, by God's help, better and happier things happened to him, so that it came about that he was commonly called by the Latins, Italians, and the Greeks, Bonaventure, that is, he who is of good fortune. Now, all of this is then applied to every soul that's in the state of grace, okay, who's still living in this world, because as we mentioned in today's uh, antiphon before the gospel, what does it say? You have received a spirit of adoption as sons, through which we cry, Abba, Father. So the Spirit of God, who descended at Pentecost, that very same Spirit, who descended in tongues of fire, also descends into the hearts of all those who are baptized at the moment of baptism, and then continues to dwell in those hearts as they live the life of grace. And so... Again, the commentary says, Thus, tropologically and anagogically, that means spiritually and with regard to end times, all of the souls of the just have been raised up from the death of sin and hell. They are bonaventures, that is, fortunate ones. And having been troubled by many in adversities and temptations, they have also triumphed over them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.